On today's episode of Path Monk Presents, I have a very special guest with me here. Please welcome Mike Maynard, who is the owner of Napier Partnership Limited. So for all of you who don't know, Napier is the PR-led full-service marketing agency that specializes in B2B technology sector, and they work closely with their clients to build campaigns, focusing on achieving results to have significant impact overall. Mike, it's an honor to have you join us this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me on the podcast, Maria. Yeah, definitely. So for all of our listeners out there, uh, tell us, what is Napier all about? What do you, what do you guys do? So we're a marketing agency, but we're actually a marketing agency focused on a specific area. Um, so we focus specifically in business to business. We don't do any consumer marketing and we focus solely in the tech sector. And primarily by what we mean by that is um, areas where people are selling technical products to technical buyers. That could be engineering products um, or it could be you know, a, a technical piece of software for use in a business. Um, and what we do is we work with clients and fundamentally, you know, our benefit is we help accelerate the velocity of prospects going through our clients' funnels. So we take them from awareness to opportunity in less time. Oh, wow. That's incredible. So I know you mentioned that you mainly focus on the tech sector, but are there any other industries that you, that your company also caters to as well? I mean, that's a great question. I, I mean, the answer is everything is technical um, and a lot of B2B products are technical. But, you know, where, where we're working with is we're really working, reaching audiences that are making a technical decision. So generally they have a specialist expertise. So they could be engineers who are building, you know, electronics products, um, or they could be operations directors trying to get software that um, manages their business better. So really everything is technical. Um, we don't really do anything that, that's non-technical. I, I started my career as an engineer, so I guess I'm a bit of a geek, and that's why we do techie stuff. All right, super cool. You don't mind me asking what type of engineer, like mechanical, cybersecurity, computer engineer? I, yeah, lovely question. No, I uh, started my uh, career as an electronics design engineer. I designed everything from radar systems through to mixing desks for recording studios, um, and then eventually moved into marketing. Um, but it all started with electronics. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Really cool backstory. I love that. So what would you say is your top client acquisition channel? Are we mainly talking digital marketing, inbound SEO or content, or would you say it's a mix of a lot of things? I, I mean, that's a really hard question because... Actually, what we do is we help clients create content and then get that content in front of um, their audience. So we talk about content creation and content distribution. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to point to a particular channel that that is, you know, what we're, we're using for one client, because we might create, you know, and, and in the world of technology, you know, white papers are still a big thing, or an ebook or a video. Um, and then we might use that across multiple channels. And we find generally using more than one channel is more effective. So quite often there'll be some content that um, we might be pitching for um, PR into publications, we might be using it on social, um, and we might also have a version of that content on the website as well. So to be honest for us, it's not a question of which channel's best, it's a question of how do we use more channels together to make them overall more effective. Yeah, for, for your case, it makes sense. All right, so th thanks for sharing that with me. So we're gonna switch gears here, and we're gonna talk about the website. So what would you say are the major strengths of, of your company's website? It's always hard when you're an agency getting asked about your website because it's a bit like that there's, you know, this English phrase, I don't know if it's an international one about cobbler's shoes, you know, cobblers never um, have great shoes because they focus on the, the shoes they're selling rather than the shoes they're wearing. And so I think, you know, in a way we're probably not focused enough. But if we look at what the website does today, it actually does fairly well at letting people understand who we are, what we do, most importantly, who we do it for. So our, our um, target audience, because um, if we have people outside of our B2B tech sector come to us, we, we just turn them away. We try and refer them to people, you know, agencies we know, but it's not very helpful for us. So we're trying to really let um, potential clients, you know, sort of self-qualify and work out whether we're a good fit or not. Um, and then it does quite a good job of engaging people um, through the blog. So we have regular news stories, and that's quite an important part of our website. So, so those are kind of the main things, um, and I think those are working pretty well. Um, some of the other stuff, you know, I, I think like everybody, there's room for improvement. So and then adding on to room for improvement, what are the, I guess, areas that we would like to focus on the website? You know, would it be, uh, you know, the main page, other pages, you know, what would that be? So... I mean, there's a couple of things. We we have um, some uh, landing pages for lead generation. 
I think like everybody else, we'd, we'd love to have 10 times that that amount of content available um, to generate more leads. I mean, everybody is looking for more leads, more opportunities. So, um, you know, some of it is volume and actually doing more of that, that uh, stuff that we're already doing. Um, but I also think, to be honest, one of the issues we have for the website is it's really not a website that's personalized to people and to people's needs. Um, and that really is sort of the next step in terms of our website. We, you know, like I say, as an agency, we do a lot of personalization work for other clients. Um, and it's not something um, we've really allocated the resources to internally. So, you know, if you're looking for an area where we need to improve personalization, I would say is the key area. OK, sweet. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So adding on to this, we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about you as a leader. So since you're the owner and you probably wear a lot of different hats and you your days look very, very different. But what does an average day look like for you in the office? Um, well, the nice thing is we're back to the office now, you know, post COVID. So I actually am one of the people who love working in the office. We've got an amazing team. And so a lot of my time is spent with the team. Um, and that can be, you know, anything from um, training some of the newer team members, um, all the way through to working on more challenging um, campaigns and, and coming up with ideas um, for our clients. So there's a lot of work, a lot of collaboration. Um, we still obviously, you know, have some people remote. We actually have three offices in the UK um, and a few people who actually work remotely as well. So th there's a lot of remote meetings. But to me, you know, the best bits about the day are sitting down with people in a meeting room and coming up with great ideas for campaigns. Um, and so a lot of it is those kind of meetings, discussions, talking to people, um, you know, if, if we're doing well, um, obviously, there's things like uh, reviewing proposals and pitches um, and rehearsing pitches. So um, really, as you say, it, it's a great mix, but most of it is spent working with people rather than being sat on my own. Yeah, definitely. And I do agree with you where when it's mainly focusing on collaborating, you're focusing on pitches and working with a team, it's easier when you're doing it in person because you're able to able to get from point A to point B a lot quicker. Yeah, you're able to like get tasks more done at a more efficient rate. At least from my experience as a marketer, it's a lot easier when you're doing it in person versus if it's, you know, on calls or if you're sending messages back. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think interaction works better face to face. I mean, things like reporting and updates and things like that. Actually, that there's there's little benefit being in person. You can do that remotely, but but certainly that that you know collaborating and working together. Totally agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're getting close to the end of our interview, and I've got some rapid fire questions for you. Are you ready? Sure, go ahead. Perfect. What is the last book that you read? Uh, the last book I read, actually, I finished last night. Um, is a book called Up and to the Right. It was written by um, a guy called Steve Sangi, who was the CEO of Microchip. Microchip's a longtime client of ours. Um, so that was the last one I read. He's just, uh, he's literally just been published. So, Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to check that book out. I <laughs> make a note. It sounds really interesting. So the next question is, if there were no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing you would want to have fixed for your role as a marketer today? I, I think the one thing that most people in in an agency world would like to fix is being able to keep up with email. If there was some magic AI tool that meant you were never behind on your email, I think the world would be a much more lovely place for people. So that would be my my ideal tool. That I agree with you. <laughs> with emails, it feels like they're never ending and they're always piling up. And then with trying to get through them by the end of the day or within the week, that, yes, that would be the perfect tool, honestly. So... If there was one piece of advice that you could give yourself when you had first started your career, what would you tell yourself? It's, uh, that's a fascinating question. I think I think it would be um, take more risks. Um, I started as an engineer. Engineers are inherently conservative. Um, you know, you're trying to design things that don't break. Um, it's kind of almost the definition of being an engineer. So I, I came from a somewhat conservative um, education and background. Um, and then I actually acquired an API. I didn't found it. I acquired it. Um, and I acquired it about three months before the dot-com crash. So we had this incredible, stressful event um, just after I bought the agency. Um, and I think that made me and the agency a little bit overcautious. We perhaps in the early days didn't grow as fast as we could have done. And more recently, where I've been more prepared to take risks, you know, and, and we've tried, you know, the vast majority of time, the risks work out. And if they don't work out, the downside is usually less than you expect. So I, I wish I'd taken more risks earlier on. I think that's something that we could all, you know, take as well, where don't be afraid to take risks. 
and don't be afraid to, you know, make mistakes as you're learning throughout your career and the, and the process overall with growing. So definitely agree with you. So we're coming to the end of our interview, and I want to thank you so much for taking time to join us on PathMug Presents, but I also want to give you the last word. If anyone were to forget about everything we've talked, to be, to talked about today in your interview, what is one thing that you want them to remember about your company overall? I think the thing to remember about our company is we are super focused on selling these technical B2B products or, or marketing these technical B2B products and helping those clients win sales. So um, we're all about talking to engineers, talking to technical decision makers. That's what we do really well. We actually don't really do anything else other than communicate with these kind of audiences. Um, so um, from my point of view, it's all about, you know, how we focus in terms of our clients. And um, that's what makes us special. That's what makes us different. And that's what makes us, you know, able to do things that other people can't because of that, you know, complete focus and experience in that sector. Sweet. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that with me. And for all of our listeners out there, check us out next week on PathMonk Presents.